by this stage, man, like, yeah, like we're just getting ready to fight now. So when, you know, you talk about the team, like for the people, what? Because I think I spoke to you before. What, 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 what is the difference between the styles and then how do you get a good balance with them? Like, so what is Muay Thai as opposed to wrestling or Jiu Jitsu? And, you know, like for the people who are not really adverse with MMA, like what, what are the different styles that you put into your game, Rob? And why? Why? Like, what, what is Muay Thai? What is karate? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, why? Like, what, what are these things? Like, for why'd you? Why would you pick the the specific dif- disciplines that you have mm. as part of your training regime? Yeah, um, I guess mi- that's that's kind of why mixed martial arts is so so exciting and, and so dynamic. It's because there's there, there's a lot of different styles being put in, in into one sport, one com- competition, one event, and you know. And, and but why would you pick? Why would you pick the, the the training people that you have? Mm with their particular styles and skill set why'd you pick them well and this is just my opinion for to 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 be to fight a high level in the ufc you need wrestling jujitsu and striking and you need a you you need those three obviously those categories are very broad so if i say striking it's there's very broad there's there's like boxing kickboxing muay thai kung fu and then uh there's multiple different types of kickboxing and multiple different types like it just you can the, go on and on and on. Yeah, and, and and that's the same with jujitsu and wrestling. But I think those three categories are, are like the the big, the big. Uh, they're the staples. Yeah, they're the staples. You need those three to 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 compete at the high level. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself get get exposed one day, and um, that's that's how like <laughs> that's why we do and we train the the way we do is because. Yeah, exactly that. You fight, you fight someone with like Joel Romero, and you don't wrestle. You're going to get taken down and taken advantage of. Yeah. You know, you, you try to strike someone like your eye hall, and you don't have any striking ability. He's going to knock you out. You know, same with jujitsu. You find like a like Jacare. You do, you don't do any jujitsu, and you get taken down. It's, it's going to be a very short fight. Even if you do jujitsu, it'll probably be a short. <laughs> it'll be a horribly long <laughs> yeah. one. What, what's pro- what's, what's you the difference between jujitsu and wrestling? Like. Because hmm? what's the difference between jujitsu and wrestling? Like, if, if, in terms of building your skill set, like, um, what's the difference between? Well, you see, we more see it as grappling, I guess. You know, like a mixture, a healthy mixture of both. But in terms of like sports sense, like jujitsu is generally like ground fighting, and um, wrestling is, is is you start standing. Two two big differences for for the late persons is Olympic freestyle wrestling uh, rewards. The takedowns a lot jiu-jitsu does as well but but olympic freestyle wrestling generally rewards that a lot more and in the groundwork on there's no submissions in wrestling so you're not allowed to push you're not allowed to push against a joint and you're not allowed to, to uh submit like if you choke someone it has to be accidental they have to have an army you know whereas in jiu-jitsu you're allowed to choke um in jiu-jitsu you can be on your back and in wrestling you can't these are the these are the very, very, very basic differences, you know. So wrestling has a lot more emphasis because of those rule sets. There's a lot more emphasis on the takedown and in trying to get your opponent on their back and keep them there, you know, which they can't. They can only be on the on their back for like one second in Olympic freestyle. Um, that's the, the the very, very basics. Now, why we do a mixture of them and why you implement both of them in MMA is because wrestling. Is going to be able to dictate whether you have the person standing up or on the ground wrestling is going to help you dictate if you can hold that person down and jiu-jitsu is going to help you with certain positions on the ground and with the ability to finalize the 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 fight with a submission whether it's a joint lock or a choke it's the same thing in, in striking so like what 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 do you classify the difference between say like a kung fu voices muay thai or Whatever it's called, and then you've got so your boxing is pretty what's the fist, and kickboxing is a combination of fist and leg. So what what one do you generally lean towards, Rob? Like when you're looking at a striker, you're known more of a striker, is that correct? Or? Yeah, and uh, you know I, I do I do boxing with Justin Fitzgerald, and I do kickboxing with Charlie Bushwati. So th- those those are my two guys. Like they're, they're the styles that I employ, but um, but my my own personal style comes from. 
back when I started karate, like all the the different types of striking that I've done to up to today have changed and molded me into my own sort of stand up game, where I because yeah. your background you started as a yeah, karate kid. as a karate guy, Goju Ru, George Barunas, shout out <laughs> from from always, eh? Yeah, so like how old were you? I was six or seven. I started karate and I, I went through all the way up until my teenagers, and then I, I swapped to jujitsu, hapkido, and then jujitsu MMA, and then just then boxing, kickboxing, and jujitsu wrestling. Uh, so yeah, so my my style takes a lot of traits from karate because that's where my my foundations in the striking form is. That's why you can see like I bounce a lot, a kind of outside fighter sort of thing. Mm. I think another important thing to note is when we're picking the coaches in that, which I honestly believe is one of the areas where I see some teams at fault with. Um, we we pick the coaches based off people management and the ability for us to work as a team and be congruent. So we don't we don't pick, for example, I need a jujitsu co- I need a jujitsu coach. Any coach will do. No, we like so the head of the grappling program program is Alex. Alex Pride is so he he will find a coach. We will discuss if if another if we need another coach in, if we need a certain person in or whatever. We're not just going to pick someone just because they're good at jujitsu, but there's no congruency with the rest of the team. So all the guys that we have on the team, they're all guys that we've known each other for a very long time, and um, there is congruency with what we do. Yeah, that's very very important. I see it in in other teams like. The jiu-jitsu coach doesn't talk with a striking coach. The striking coach has a Muay Thai background, so he doesn't speak to the boxing coach, or or they disagree or whatever. So there's got to be there's got to be uh, an, an ability to interchange ideas and an ability to communicate throughout the team and be flexible. It's yeah, very 100%. important to be flexible because, like the like I said, like none of my coaches try to force me into a into a style or position or, or, or role that I'm not comfortable with. They, they work around me and then just help me improve what I'm doing. They do little tweaks to make my kicking game stronger whilst keeping my original kicking technique, you know, or they, and they just, they just touch everything up. You know, that's, I, I get, you know, that's a big key to how we've, how we've run thing, run things so far. So, so I've seen you don't stop training, you train, 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 but how, how do you both identify like, um, improvements in your skill sets from a coach point of view and the fighter so like so like what, what's that measure you know what i mean like if do you get gold stars if you do this particular thing in a particular way like how do you know that you're improving can i like how do you quantify you know yeah. real simple if you think you're if you think you're you got good wrestling like let's say you haven't got a wrestling background and you think you're a good wrestler and you go down to a wrestling tournament where there's some good 17 18 year old kids they're going to roll you they're going to roll you pretty easy if you if you don't have a wrestling if you don't have a jiu-jitsu background and you think your your jiu-jitsu is good enough go into a jiu-jitsu comp go do a purple belt jiu-jitsu comp in a gi and you're going to find out your jiu-jitsu is not that good if you think your boxing is that good and you but you haven't really got a boxing background put the gloves on go and spar some good amateurs just some good amateurs and you're going to get a reality check a lot of these guys honestly don't do that they don't box with boxers they don't do jiu-jitsu with jiu-jitsu guys and they don't wrestle with wrestlers so they think they're better than they are because they're very tough they're very strong they're they're good fighters they can fight but as far as skill wise is when you get in there and you realize like 18 year old purple belt kid just tapped me five times you know what i mean like <laughs> that's how good i am okay cool you know because in the in the octagon maybe no one can tap you mm. you know because it just hasn't played out that way but once you start doing that you you, you get a good reality check so sorry we no that's exactly it. that's uh, that's our whole that's our whole team's mentality like we in the off seasons we compete a lot we invite some high level guys there like trust me you think you're good at jujitsu or you think your jujitsu's getting better invite craig jones down was, <laughs> after craig jones came to our gym i stopped training <laughs> i was just like no you know honestly who made me not want to train was sergio pena like like he demotivated me so much like i was just watching him and i was just thinking like i don't know anything man anything. like it's it's um it's a massive sobering thing like skill wise 
you don't know anything. But then, like, I think from you're asking from how do we grow, like, as a as a coach, like, my background is a teacher, and I think teachers are one of the most underrated professions. Um, and unfortunately, the thing with teaching as well, when a teacher gets to about in Australia, anyways, ninety to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Say if you're an, if you're an engineer and you've been working in the industry and you're good, you can jump to like 150, 160 in your mid forties. It's that's pretty reasonable that that would happen. As a teacher, you kind of unless you want to go into something that's not teaching, like into like a management role or something different, you're kind of always going to be at that at that level. So what happens with a lot of teachers is, unfortunately, they the good ones end up going into other roles that aren't teaching or leaving and doing private sectors private sector stuff so the thing that i was going to say with teaching being that i'm a teacher i'm able to identify like skill gaps i'm able to put learning programs together and i have access to people that that work in education and work within with how how people learn you know so um not just so not just i don't just look at jujitsu people or wrestling guys or fighting guys a lot of the knowledge comes from the education sector because they're the people that do that. The same way as jujitsu guys choke people out, educators educate. So I, I have a lot of background with that ability to be able to check my own um, my own abilities as a coach and whatnot with what's happening in the combination of skills and the education sector. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess in, in terms of me, Funny how with my skill set is I have a great team. Like they, they never stop training, and uh, and you can see like in the, when we roll and when we when we spar, when we move, when we drill, you can see them getting better. Better the, the gaps closing slowly and slowly and surely, and then like and then when I start to get better, I start to increase that gap a little bit, and then they they catch up again. They catch up again, and then it's just like the cat and mouse sort of thing, like constantly. And um, yeah, it's it's it, it's great, you know, having having those guys that, that train at that level, that are, that are at that level. What well, what I tell you, a lot of people won't do is Rob goes and competes in wrestling, at, in just normal wrestling comps, and Australia is not known for its great wrestling, but it still has decent wrestlers, like in at the national level, <clears throat> and he'll lose some matches. You know what I mean? And and that puts you in check. That puts you in check completely. Um, if you if you want to see how good your boxing is and put gloves on and go spar dry or potato you know what i mean and see how you go see how you fare or your kickboxing go and spar the mckinnon brothers go and do jiu-jitsu with craig jones go into competitions go they rob and the other boys went to the asian abu dhabi trials to get more experiences to see where you're at so there's no line in those results you can't you can give him a black belt if you want but you can't just bribe everyone in the comp to lose you know what i mean because we're trying